Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to tie this fly and this fly is based on tarpon cockroach fly. The difference is that I've been using deer hair instead of soft hackle for the head here and the reasons are uh, pretty simple. Deer hair will push and displace more water than the soft hackle will. Uh, the reason why I'm doing that, like the reason why I changed this is uh, simply because I need something uh, for relatively muddy water and I think this will provide me enough movement so tails hackle here is for for the movement obviously and I'm using two tails uh, bending on each side if you don't have curved feathers uh, well it's easy to split those tails as you would split on mayflies uh, so tails for movement head for the push uh, color for the attraction uh, this one here is for the contrast so I'm not imitating anything it's more or more like a, a tractor fly um, just a theory for, for start like a concept and I have oversized uh, eyes which are again to attract fish so everything here in at least in my mind for now is to attract fish it doesn't look like any other bait fish that I have around but I think it will provide enough triggers to well to to attract some fish on it uh, the target fish for this is ladyfish and uh, sea bass that I have around I haven't been lucky to catch sea bass but I've been catching some ladyfish on usually on, on bunker style streamers but for this muddy water, uh, there is a place that we found recently, so I think this may be the solution. Uh, the hook I'm using is Kamakatsu, this one. So, uh, in materials regard, I'm going to use, okay, Semperfly, uh, wax thread 6 through 0, that's going to bond everything together. For the tails, I'll be using Grizzly Hackle from this cape that obviously has been used and abused a lot. Uh, it's not some high quality ca uh, cape. I mean, actually, I don't know what kind of cape is this. I just got it from a friend. And But at the lower part of it, there were some feathers that were uh, large and wide enough for this. I tried also something with... Let me just show you. I tried something also with a hen hackle. It's shorter, more bendy, uh, it will uh, provide more resistance over here, so the, it will be easier to push and put together by the water. For the head, oh, head obviously, I'm using Nature Spirit All-Purpose Deer Hair. I think elk hair would be better, but since I'm using relatively small hook, uh, deer hair will do. So, I covered all the materials. There are two. So I will start with the Semperfly uh, Wax Thread 6 through 0 in white. Uh, obviously, you can use whatever you want, but I will like this one. It can get flattened. It's relatively thick. If you're careful, it won't cut through the hair. And let's go. So I'll start with regular hitch here and cut the excess. For the feathers, I want to talk about a very simple thing, and that's shape of the rakes. So this is peacock's feather, and um, let me cut it first so you can see it better. So peacock feather is going to, to serve as an example, in large example of a feather. So let me see. Well, you can see kind of a here, the feather is not round it doesn't have a round cross section it does have it if you go into quill part or if you go into this first part of the feather um, but if you go into this nice barb uh, part of the feather so let me show you another one so here this is this is the quill this is the round part more or less and it transitions into this f part of the feather that has relatively slim portion and the flat part the flat part of the feather holds barbs so that's why when you wrap the feather around the hook the barbs uh, go 
perpendicular to the hook shank um, and you want to use that so there, there, there will be two ways to, to mount the feather if you just try to mount the feather like this it may stay as you want it but it also may rotate on you so it may get weird curves if that's what you want that's fine uh, my goal here is to tie it to have it uh, bent outwards if it flips a little bit to the side it's kind of okay I would like it to be perfectly uh, vertical but sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't uh, I have to admit I'm not very 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 good with feathers uh, but I'm still learning obviously so what I do I align two tips and then I have a reference feather that I removed a couple of barbs as you can see here so I know the length the length is one two and maybe two and one third of the hook shank uh, that's more or less what I'm going after so I just align all three feathers and now I know where to start stripping so I just do this this is the easiest way to achieve consistency and consistency is relatively important because if you want to have like all the flies same or at least similar to one another consistency is something we should look after so I'm doing this for all four feathers two at a time and I'll just snip the excess so I'll have some bare rakes over here I'll have two feathers ready this part I can throw away, I don't need it at the moment. Well, I don't need it at all. And now I'll take another two feathers. It's, again, uh, very good if, if those uh, feathers are relatively similar in size and shape and curve and because you will be able to align them more evenly. So I need a third feather. I land the tips over here and then I just go down a strip like this. Now in this case I have two sets of feathers like two of them are relatively similar and another set is relatively similar similar but in between they're like relatively different so what I will you do is very simple solution here I want to have symmetrical sides okay so one set and another set they're not the same this set is a little bit wider so I'll take one wide one relatively narrow feather and I will put them together and I'll make two sets of those so one set now let's talk about mounting those feathers because of the feather shape well rake is shape it's easier if you put rake is on the top of the hook shank like so barbs sticking upwards and downwards because it's less likely to rotate then if you push it like this if you want to put it on the side then you need to use barbs you need to catch barbs with your thread because barbs will kind of stabilize uh, the feather so i want to make here a little bit wider uh, wider base so I can align all four feathers and I'm trying to make it as flat as possible that's why I'm counter spinning the thread okay and now I'll just make final check everything is aligned over here so on my half I'll catch one two pull up pull up pull up pull up the result let me just see goes outwards okay now I'll take another set and I will do the same so I will align the tips okay let me see looking good I need to position them near the first set very near so put everything here counter spin the bubble holder soft wrap soft wrap pull up 
to pull down. And then I'll pull up to pull down and go backwards. And this should be okay. As you can see, all sets are going backwards. So as you can see, we have two feathers, two feathers splaying outwards. Now it's time to do some hair, hair job. You can secure this with super glue and I'll just try to open mine. So the, this, is, this is stuck, so I just made a small hole in the bag, in the bottle, sorry. I'll add some super glue here. Let it sit for a couple of seconds. I don't want it to soak into the feather because it can br make feather break. That's very important to remember whenever you're using super glue. If it soaks into your tails, feathers, whatever, it will make them more brittle. I'm soaking with the, well, I'm collecting uh, with the tissue, the excess. This should be plenty. Now, there are two ways you can tie the, the hair, spin the hair around over the, the over the bear hook shank or over the thread base. Both ways uh, have probably advantages and disadvantages. Uh, I, I'm not, well, I don't see much of a difference, so I'm not gonna tell you which one is the best because there, there is probably not the best way. What is important is to take something and move, clean out the under fur and short hairs from, from this clump that you cut. Very important because if you need to stuck, if you need to spin, uh, the under fur tends to kind of bond the hair and it's more difficult to manage. So when you kind of remove all you need, it's already kind of uh, aligned. That's how I removed it from the pelt. I'll show you later how I did it. Um, I want to. I want you to have to extend over the bend. What will happen is that the tips will actually catch into the bend. So you will have to do it with a uh, dubbing needle later. You will just need to clean it, but it's okay. Don't worry about that. So I want it to extend over the bend. So okay. I'll just align the tips here. Use sharp scissors for that. I'll do it over the container so I don't make too much mess. So I'll just align it a little bit. Now, counter spin the bobbin holder a little bit so you get neutral or a little bit jumpy thread into your hand. And then I'll start with the thread up. I'll go up one round squeeze a little bit through the same spot second one squeeze a little bit and then go down and release your left hand and pull the thread and then you get spun spun here so this is the the trick i learned from watching videos of kelly gallup which is one of the best tires I've seen on the internet because he actually teaches people what to do. Uh, he's not showing off the patterns. I mean, he is, but he's talking logic behind it. So he's one of the people I highly respect. I'll wet finish the, 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 the fly over here. Okay. Now, the thing I was talking about, as you can see, is I got a couple of hairs, not a couple, but a lot of them stuck, but that's very easy to remove. And this is what I've ended up with. Now, because I already made this video and there were some mistakes and my friend suggested like, oh, I would do it differently. I would cut it uh, prior to setting the eyes and stuff. So I never did it before. I'll do it now because it makes sense what he said. So I'll just cut and prepare the head for the eyes. I'm using the razor and I want to cut sides here but just this this side this part I'm not gonna cut the, the long hair so just go into the one two a little bit maybe a little bit more but that's more than enough I think so just two maybe three millimeters over here 
don't go too low because you don't want to cut your thread one two and that's it for this so I have color that will push some water I have indents over here that will hold eyes and now I'll use new scissors so now I'm just gonna cut the hair over here to prepare the head like I don't want to have too much of, of hair sticking out okay okay a little bit more now the the way how to set the eyes I do it with uh, UV glue I've seen people using super glue and other glues but it just doesn't work for me uh, it, if you hit something the super glue it's, it's brittle so it break uh, it the hair doesn't hold so I, I like to kind of soak impregnate everything with the UV glue so I'll take those six millimeter eyes and I'll put them above well in the level with hook shank so I'm not gonna do it this way like half down half up I'll just take another one I'm gonna do it in the level with with hook shank so yeah sort of like this and I'll do the same on the other side I'm trying to do pupils to go vertically just looks meaner and I know what I'm doing all the time so it's again it's consistency so just it doesn't hold much but usually it holds a little bit better than now okay I'll just remove it try to attach it okay it's open so at this point you can see that it's symmetrical I have I do have some hairs sticking here a little bit okay now the self self adhesive part of this eyes is not enough to hold anything here just to, to hold barely now I'm using it's it's thick yeah it's thick I have more viscose and I have this a little bit thicker glue and I like to do the following I just drop it here let it soak into the hair because you need something under the eyes to be solid and then I go over and I, I re really want glue to soak around the eight edges of the eyes into the hair to go a little bit deeper so I'll just take my time I want to do it relatively neatly now if I'm satisfied with, with this side just take your lamp and set it for a while just for a while you don't need like five seconds or something half set nothing else so you can do this the, the opposite side and on the opposite side you need to do the same so you go around like pupil and then just touch barely the hair and the viscosity of the glue will make it run into the hair and stay there so okay now I need a bigger drop that goes in between the eyes like so okay it's just a process that you need to, to learn like you just go and do it a couple of times and then you will know what to do it's easy I'm literally making molding the head here okay let me see symmetrical from all sides okay I'll do the okay soak it in here soak it in here press the eye press the eye it's time for the lamp so what I did the the space between hairs allows the light to penetrate and to set the UV glue so that's why I'm holding it here for a while I'll do the same from this side as well 
and this is just a rough uh, rough setting so after some time I want to check is everything leveled is do I need to add uh, some UV uh, anywhere do I have any, any gaps or whatever this is it set properly looks set okay but what I else also need to do is I just want to do this final trimming here and what you can do actually you can sometimes take if you have too too much glue over here and if you're closing gap and that is the, exactly the reason why I set those eyes a little bit up on the on the hook shank so more than half of the eyes is like above the hook shank level so what I need what I want to do is I want those eyes up so the hook gap is not obstructed and uh, that's all plus in that point in that uh, setting uh, this is going to, to serve as a keel uh, like imagine you have a boat you have some keel on the bottom that keeps the bo boat run straight like normal through the water it doesn't flip on the side even if it has some weight on the top so this is why I need to do this so the hook hook gap uh, is not obstructed by too much hair uh, if it goes to the side you can always cut the hair from below it won't affect too much the idea of the streamer so this is still the idea I need to see it running in the water but uh, I think it will run very very nicely so I'm just making it kind of more neat and that's all so guys thank you very much for watching if you like this video if you maybe learned something new please give it a like subscribe it means to my channel and until next time keep safe and tight lines